we are back now with our discussion with Dr. Joel Florencio, even though he prefers we not call him doctor unless he's at a bank. <laughs> but I pointed out he earned it. Um, following up on the video that you just saw. So yeah. welcome, Joel. Yeah, so hi. Um, uh, so, I mean, yeah, maybe what I just want to basically tell a, a little bit of background research on, on the film and then the on the project that led to the film and kind of maybe the relationship between the film and, and the research, how I kind of approach it, because I guess this, this is an event that I practice as research. So the, the project was really, I guess, driven by me having realized that lots of people, lots of gay men who hook up ads was in like places that I was to go, uh, that I go to that the, there were lots of people who kind of identify themselves as pigs. There was lots of kind of pig porn uh, growing um, in the last few few years, and and I was interested to kind of think a bit about the relationship between, I guess, uh, porn, so kind of sex media, but also um, the introduction of antiretrovirals for kind of management of prophylaxis of HIV. How that has all kind of come together to kind of facilitate or, or kind of catalyze these new forms of like uh, gay male identification, uh, but also forms of embodiment. So my, my interest uh, was really about, okay, what does this do? What do these conditions do to, to the body, particularly to the male body, but also how they, can they help us reframe what the male body is and what it can do? So considering kind of histories of the male body, and how it has been idealized in, in European thought as a body that is always, you know, uh, impermeable, impenetrable. If it is penetrable, it's, it's kind of effeminate or more woman-like. So that that would be the kind of the narrative of, of European thought. Um, and and so what was interesting to me was to see this emergence of a lot of men who seem to become the more masculine the more they are penetrated. So there was a kind of an interesting thing there in relationship to, to how does the penetration seen as something that uh, emasculates or historically seen as something that emasculates men comes in this context to mean something that kind of hyper-masculinizes these men. Um, and, and what are the kind of the trade-offs for that to happen? So that's kind of the, kind of the, the project. Um, at the same time, I was also interested in, in thinking about then what are the ethics of these of these sex scenes, of these sex cultures, uh, how do these men experience these, these, these things themselves, and considering obviously the kind of sexual behaviors that they're into, um, how they approach the relationship with, with others, uh, what are the, how do they look after or care for one another, or how can they, they potentially look after and care for one another to kind of minimize the 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 kind of the tendency to fascism, I guess, on the one hand, on, on, on the other hand, the kind of enhance the possibilities of actually exploring the plasticity of, of the body, the sex of the kind of thing. Um, as like the, as a, a site of potentiality uh, and, and, and politics, I guess. So what, so I, the field work, so basically I went to lots of sex books, played by the, the taxpayer. <laughs> I went by the by the research clubs. I went to lots of sex clubs. I did lots of uh, talking to lots of people in porn directors and porn models. So I was in, in, in London, in uh, Berlin, LA, and San Francisco over 2019. And then I wrote the book. But also part of, of, of the thing I wanted to do since the beginning was to, you know, it's really difficult to try to convey something that is bodily by writing an academic book. So you know, if if I'm if this whole thing is about pleasure, it's about it's about you know in some way losing oneself, um, about the 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 kind of the joy of that, but also the kind of the dangers of that. Um, if it's about intimacy, and we're talking a lot about intimacy today, if it's about touch, you know, how the hell am I going to put this in into an academic book? So that that was its own challenge. But on the other hand, you know, and because so, so many of these cultures were informed. By sex media and by by, the, by uh, kind of porn genres that, that became increasingly available, um, we're in dialogue with, with those. So I thought, okay, we 
let's try to make a film as part of the research process, but also make a film that is not an illustration of the book, but it's kind of a, a, a complement, a, a parallel a companion piece. Um, really to kind of try to give voice so that that's why there's no really you know, specialist talking heads. It's really about let it was really led by the, the stories of, of these guys. Uh, and then trying to convey visually some of that sense of, of, of you know, of, of flesh, of intimacy, of, of warmth, of desire um, that they talked about. It was also interesting because, so this, I, was, I did the, the, the research all through 2019. 2020 was the year of the shooting the film. It was supposed to be shot in all different locations, but then he decided, okay, let's focus for a long period of time in Berlin so we can actually spend lots of time with myself and, and the kind of the film crew that work that I work with uh, to really spend time with people just chatting. And, you know, we ate lots of meals, we went for coffee and drinks and went for walks to try to get a sense of who they were, not to be at, at the least. Uh, exploitative as possible. But so the day that we eventually all arrived back in Berlin to start shooting was a week before lockdown. So we wanted to make a film that our plan was to make a long a feature film that included also, uh, I mean, I had hired uh, a particular like cruise bar in Berlin because you cannot film in, in sex venues, uh, you cannot have cameras in sex venues uh, in Berlin. So I had to hire, I had signed a contract to hire it for one night to make a special night that everyone would, would go and know that this is for a film. Um, and so lockdown happened. And so literally we didn't know what to do, how to make a film about sex, wanting to film intimacy and sex, and suddenly you cannot. Uh, that was, it was a massive, you know, it was really difficult, uh, lots of panic, uh, are we going to do it or not? Um, then eventually what was supposed to be a month of shooting for a feature became condensed to literally four days, uh, which was the four days before the announcement of lockdown, the start of lockdown, between the announcement of the start. Uh, we could not shoot any more people together, so we literally went from you know, flat to flat. And that made it kind of somehow, and this was all kind of idea, our film director was completely, you know, losing it. So he thought he couldn't do it because uh, he comes from a kind of a, 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 a visual anthropology background. So he's like, I can't film if I'm not spent like a month with people. Uh, if I don't have like hours and hours of footage. But our uh, editor, Liz Rosenfeld, who's is a performance artist and, and the, the visual artist, was like, "Babes, I can, I can do it. Just." Throw everything at me, I'll find a way. Uh, you know, let's get creative. So what was supposed to be an ethnographic film became, became this, more kind of experimental, all because of this. Um, and, and yeah, so that, 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 there's this kind of interesting way in which both the book and the film came with about intimacy, about sex, about you know, the kind of the body as kind of a fascinating and you know, a site of potentially so much joy and 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 um, and pleasure, this kind of magic thing, um, and about bodies together. These two things came out at the, at a time when actually he's not allowed to, to be together with anyone, um, and it was made at the time where, where that was possible. So it ended up, at least to her, to us, have a sense of, of really a kind of melancholia uh, that you know something had been had been lost, and obviously certain kind of the, Queer and gay sex scenes and all, and all of that certainly seemed to have vanished, and, and, and people don't really know what's going to happen. Um, so, so that's where it comes from, really. And, and I mean, I think and it's interesting because the film actually has a lot more exposure than, than, than the book. I and mean, surely I know that people read that, <laughs> that I know people have read the book because they got in touch with me, but you know, the film actually allows. The research and at least some of the ideas of the, the, the research to go uh, to actually reach a lot beyond beyond academia itself. So it has been at you know 
I guess like every bloody European porn film, porn film festival, uh, some LGBTQ plus film festivals, uh, documentary film festivals. So it, it has gone you know, all the way from like Chile to 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 to, uh, to Germany and Austria, Italy, the UK, the US. It has been met in, in quite a few places where you know people would not necessarily want to even academic work. So that was really kind of a joyful experience. It was really kind of sexy experience, slightly like that chill, like, you know, how to do something like this funded by, by a research council. Uh, so hence why there is no actual sex in the film, because I think that, that's where the line would be drawn. <laughs> uh, so how do you show sex in a, uh, in a way that, you know, you know, the research council and the university are happy, but without showing sex. So, you know, hence all the, you know, like things that look like oozing and, and, and touchy and, and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what happens. And I don't know, I'm happy to talk about it, uh, to answer any questions. Had recruited for to basically not recruited for people in this space or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who, they usually go to this space. Yeah, yeah. yeah and had they would, uh, I mean, they would do whatever they do in this place, but obviously, we had to film it in ways that could be uh, acceptable. Um, I mean, it, it, so I think the, with the film, I didn't really want to take. I want them just to articulate themselves without me having to make a point of any kind. I thought this to me would be important would be, and you know, and my, also my drive to make the film was my kind of hatred for that vice film that came out a few years ago called Chemsex, the film, uh, which is really exploitative and, and kind of it's very shallow in how it just makes It takes control of the, of the stories of people and makes them one dimensional in some way. And, and I didn't want to do that. Um, also, I didn't want to you know, push aside anything that could be seen as, as bad or negative. Uh, I want to kind of show the, the complexity of it in, in, in some way. Uh, I mean, there's also things that they say, some of them say in, in the film that I cringe a bit, but I didn't want to take it out. And actually, I didn't add or take it out. Like, it, it was Liz. So my, my main, so I brought Liz in. I mean, Liz is, is a good friend and we do a lot of things together, but Liz is also not a, a cis white man. And so I was like, hey, Liz, you need to do something with this. Like what, so how can you tell, look at all this footage, what is the story that you, as, as a kind of, you know, like as a non-binary person, how do you deal with this? And Liz, Liz was like, oh my God, I can't, we need another film about faggots. I'm sick of faggots. You know, everything is about faggots all the time, you know, just, <laughs> um, and they really struggled for, I mean, I think they had the footage for, what, two months, and then they messaged me, 
that is like I can't do anything with this. This one line in particular, I can't do anything with that. Like, what the fuck? Uh, what is but but then at some point there was something that clicked and that list could relate to it. That's the kind of so this is the story of this man literally put together by Liz, uh, edited together by, by Liz. Um, and, and so I think that that gives a kind of an extra point of view because I didn't want it necessarily to be like centered on, the, like Liz said, you know, faggots making fun about faggots. Uh, and, um, and, you know, in, with, with the, the drugs, you know, I think what you get from the film, but also, I think, you know, from the book, but the, forget about the book, what you get, I think what you get from the film is this sense that, that those are things that they navigate, that they do their best to, to navigate and, and, you know, try to, you know, take what is, you know, affirming or, or kind of, you know, self-enhancing or self-expansive or like, kind of, kind of like positive affect while trying to kind of negotiate sometimes better, sometimes worse, um, what is kind of hindering. And I think that comes across in, 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 in some way, <clears throat> even in how they, even in the kind of contradiction somehow, you know, the guy that talks about, about you know, being dominated, but also having boundaries, but at the same time, then also says, uh, but I also don't care much about them. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is, and I think that's, yeah, and if you if you kind of if you stay with the trouble, you know, like, like you know, to kind of uh, like Haro and Bubo, or whatever, that's completely about something else. But you know, if you stay with that moment of, of, of tension, that's the thing that you need to, to stay with. It's sort of like why, why also my students often complain that you know they write me a dissertation. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Like, hey, you need to stay with that. Just that, write about that because that's that's. That's one of the juices. That's the thing that is useful to kind of think with, um, rather than wanting to kind of come with an answer. Um, and and you know, I think that's that's also what, what the the project is about. And you know, to go back, you know, to the question of, of drugs. You know, drugs mean nothing apart from you know. I really don't like talking about drugs. I think it's a lot more productive to talk about you know patterns and contexts of drug use, right? Because drugs are just things, they don't do anything. You know, it's people together or alone in particular contexts and with particular kind of life stories doing drugs that it becomes meaningful and that can have different kinds of results, right? Um, I, I think that uh, what I'm trying to ask actually was, do you think the drugs enhance the possibility of the experimental, mm -hmm. the yeah. experimental with, with the body? Yeah. Because maybe because it's so it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a niche it's a niche inside a niche right it's the outreach community but it's it's a niche inside a community as well um, yeah and and kind of sometimes first of all what what is really interesting that I noticed is I don't know if it was um, the purpose of when when they are talking they're not like they're not in, in the in the frame yeah so they are kind of like hiding so we just we just uh, listen to them this the, the voices which is quite interesting right because um it's a way of like you know uh i'm i'm here i am i am this but i'm not showing myself completely but for them they they kind of experiment with the 100 percent possibilities of the body as well uh, -huh. uh and I, I i found the image really nice like really like was was beautiful it was kind of explicit in a way that it's just you're not showing sex but yeah. it's, it's there yeah 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 uh, it's it's lovely. Uh, yeah, I think I think and you you mentioned as well the the way I guess like we, we talk about you know, the same thing with as well how how the, the research can affect yeah. communities and I think you just said that maybe the the your book is not kind it, maybe the 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 documentary the film is the way of promoting the book as well the the knowledge yeah I mean it, 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 yeah it has been used I think it has always especially you know it has been screened at you know at, Community groups like, for instance, like in, in, in Chile and in Santiago and Barcelona, it was kind of, you know, I think queer king communities or, or like in Chile, it was like a leather, a leather man's group. And that it's always where, you know, you use the film and then suddenly you get people talking amongst themselves and, you know, if I'm, if I'm there or like zooming in. 
uh, then it's really an opportunity to talk. And that to me is really actually more meaningful than you know, I don't care to read the book. I actually don't care about the book. The book is, I care about the book in the sense, but the book is something else. If they want to read it, they can read it, but the opportunity to actually use this as like a cue for a conversation about, as a prompt for a conversation about, you know, sex cultures, uh, what we like about them, what we fear about them, then it kind of makes it's more meaningful, I think. Uh, just on, on, the, on the absences, also what we didn't want to do with the film was to kind of uh, indiv individualize speakers. So, uh, because we didn't want to reduce an individual to whatever they were saying. So it was kind of a conscious decision to split audio from image. Some of the people who speak are there and you see them. And then, the, but then there was a second point, which was the fact that because of lockdown, we couldn't do, we couldn't shoot all the video interviews. So we had to use audio from the interview that I had done for the book. Uh, so we kind of mixed them all together. Uh, but the aim was always to you know, not narrow down on a person, to give you a sense that this is a snapshot. It's not like a kind of you know, bird's eye view of a scene, it's a snapshot, but at the same time, not try to avoid uh, reducing someone to whatever they say. And so the kind of that, that separation, I think, gives it a bit. Yeah, so I suppose, you know, the fact that, you know, you see the the cinematographer, you see, you see the director in the shoot in, in, on, in the, on screen. Um, again, to show that, you know, this, we are making the film. <laughs> you are not just like floating in the air looking at people, but this is something we are doing. It's so, you know, it's reality to the extent that it is a film, uh, that it is a documentary. So not something to kind of pretend that there's no one there. Yeah, and and again, I think that that's an interesting thing because I mean, as you know, and you know, the whole thing with, with you know, they meant that they they get fed, they are kind of. Yeah. Masculine. Yeah. 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 But what I thought about that is that there's an interesting negotiation. You know, I, I think I say in the book, you know, gay men are men after all. So, you know, you can, I'm not like putting it, it's not like these people are the other guy, you know, the political other guy, but, but there's something interesting that happens a, a kind of a, 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 a negotiation of the, the the parameters of masculinity. And so the kind of, the, the more like loads or takes that you take, you kind of rearticulate it, not just by being like super buff, like many of them are, but you kind of use that as, as kind of evidence of other attributes of masculinity, like athleticism, endurance, um, you know, self-reliance, what, you know, like you, you are basically a, an Olympic athlete. You 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 are, uh, are kind of heroic. You can take take it like a man, like the expression. Um, so, oh yeah yeah yeah. All, all of this culture, all of this culture is, is like is like dominated by the subs, even or, or the bottom, even in in porn. That's another thing that led me to to this was realizing that suddenly, after I don't know the late nineties or early two thousands or before. During the 70s and the 80s, there was like the tops, there were like the, the porn stars that everyone knew. And suddenly, after you know, late 90s to 2000, the porn, people only know about the bottoms. And there's even stories of you know, tops in certain studios complaining that they don't get enough attention. So one, of, one of the pornographers in San Francisco was telling me that they had to, to you know, uh, they had lots of like tops that wanted the same attention as their bottoms. Mm -hmm. Because the bottoms are getting like you know special edition, you know, best seat of this guy, but it's it was always the bottom. It's like right? Like so the the is actually about the woman. Yeah. It's a phenomenon in which everyone gets the attention of the woman. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I love how you took this story and you're like, we're gonna make it masculine because this is the you know more and faster, whatever. And it is because we didn't have 
I mean, yeah, you have. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's something. I, mean, I think there is more at stake uh, with the person that plays that role. I mean, I don't want to be like. Biased, <laughs> but you know, I think I think that there's a certain again, me uh, Liz, uh, Liz is, is always talking about how in, in kind of lesbian and queer kind of media senses, uh, people always want them to to kind of dom them, but and then that everything is about the sub, and no one cares about the the, the dom at the top. You know, no one does have to get to the top or to the dom. You know, um, and yeah, so I think there's this sense that everything is at stake for, uh, and that the top is just like a service dog. I wish you also like straight porn would be like that, you know, that the, that the bloke would just like a service, a service dog. Which is different, right? So, like, even if you could watch a friend or partner to the top, and they're down, it's just it's just different. Yeah, but then you know, at the same time, another thing that seems interesting to me is that, so during the AIDS crisis, it was really where the kind of the, the, the crystallizing of like top and bottom positions, bottom positions happening. Again gay sex culture because before everyone in the 70s everyone was versatile then because of fear of, of hiv and aids the, those kind of positions solidified a lot more like there's this like series of books called the joy of gay sex which have a dictionary type thing for things and it's only like in, in, in the 80s that top and bottom appear as as categories like the definitions um but then I think that now after antiretro virals, and again, you can see it in porn too, that porn performers are a lot more happy to shift positions. And in these scenes too, you know, so I think there's an interesting thing there as well around uh, perhaps being top and bottom being called a contingent thing, mm -hmm. or because it is something that you find yourself in, but that there is another tool for you to play with. In, in how we kind of explore what uh, like this. Cheers, thanks. Right.